Ten years ago, something amazing happened within the world of gaming. Space games began to re-emerge from their long absence, and it all began with a rather unexpected new trend. The rise of crowdfunding for video games was new, and early in 2012 had some unprecedented successes. Now, after more than a decade of the Dark Ages with barely any space games, 2012 and Kickstarter combined to reintroduce them to an eager market. A new age was born, and the future of bold, massive space games was assured. Ten years later, however, things haven't quite turned out as many people might have hoped. So, what's the problem? What went wrong? And, whilst we're at it, what went right? It all began with the hype and anticipation, as many things do when it comes to gaming. And of course, gamers are keenly aware of this. Dozens of big releases per year are highly hyped and highly anticipated. And this, of course, brings in big money to the publishers and developers. Now, combine hype and anticipation with nostalgia, and you have a recipe for success. And there's without a doubt that this all was one of the driving forces for 2012's many successful crowdfunding video game projects. Two big space games were crowdfunded in 2012. The much-loved Elite franchise made a return, as did a spiritual successor to Wing Commander. Elite Dangerous went on to generate almost 1.6 million in crowdfunding, whilst Star Citizen continues to receive crowdfunded money to this day. In the first few years, the excitement for these two games was so high that it essentially revived interest in the space game genre as a whole. No Man's Sky soon followed with its announcement in 2014. The future seemed so bright for space games, so much so that even the highly popular Call of Duty series got in on the act as well. Infinite Warfare, released in 2016, bringing futuristic space combat and spaceships to the long-running series. Yet here, today, in 2022, was this promise of a wonderful space game-filled future truly delivered? Well, let's put it this way. After over a decade in development, Squadron 42 remains missing in action. Star Citizen is still in perpetual development without a release date in sight. In fact, Star Citizen developers CIG recently dropped a nuclear bomb onto the community with the announcement that they will be scaling back on the game's roadmaps. More on that in the video linked below. And really, seeing as Star Citizen's apparent open and transparent development is such a big deal to backers, a reduced roadmap is a very real problem. Here is what CIG had to say on the matter. There still remains a very loud contingent of roadmap watchers who see projections as promises, and the continued noise every time we shift deliverables has become a distraction both internally at CIG and within our community, as well as to prospective Star Citizen fans watching from the sidelines at our open development communications. So yeah, not really the type of message you'd expect to hear from a multi-million pound company. At any rate, meanwhile, Elite Dangerous has fared a little better. Fully released in 2014, the game has sold millions of copies. Many people have found the gameplay holds their attention, whilst numerous community events have garnered a lot of interest, especially in the early days. However, it's not been all roses. The game has managed to release a paltry two large expansions over an eight-year period, the most recent of which, Odyssey, had a rather disastrous launch. I won't recount the details of that here. The other big space game, titled from the past 10 years, of course, was No Man's Sky. Announced in 2014, it launched in 2016. Unfortunately, its launch was one of the biggest failures in gaming history. We all know the story there. However, developers Hello Games pulled one of the biggest comebacks ever. No Man's Sky went on to become much loved by gamers and critics alike. In the five years since its launch, it has received 16 updates, all of them free, and each fundamentally changing and adding to the game. Against this tapestry of large space games, smaller games have grown and thrived. Everspace 2, Outer Wilds, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, X4 Foundations, and many, many more have all arrived over the past few years. It's undeniable, then, that space games as a whole are in a very different place to 2012 and the years prior to that. Today, gamers are spoiled for choice. The quantity is there, the variety is there, and if you look in the right places, the quality is also there. 
In the end, the past 10 years have been a very mixed story for space games. The fact that this video even exists is certainly a testament to how things have improved. Yet, to me at least, and maybe to a few others as well, space games as a whole still don't quite feel to be in the place that they perhaps should be and perhaps could be. In large part, this is due to the many unfulfilled promises from both Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. The later is still in an alpha state and is regularly involved in controversy, whilst Elite has failed to live up to its true potential. Now, don't get me wrong here, not complaining, both are great games in their own right. Both have redefined parts of the gaming industry in more ways than one, and both are marvellous technological achievements. Yet we can't sit here looking at all the good things and ignore some of the problems. Both are plagued by far too many problems and both have so far failed to reach these lofty heights, dreams and expectations set by their respective creators back in 2012. So really, today in 2022, 10 years later, I think we can kind of sit here and in hindsight look at what went wrong and what went right. What went wrong for space games over the past 10 years? Well, we could put that one fairly simply and fairly plainly. And most of the failure comes down to just two games. Uh, the biggest of these titles was the failure to fulfill plans that were laid out back during 2012. Of course, this doesn't mean that those titles weren't successful. It doesn't mean that they're not enjoyed and much loved by a lot of people. Of course, they are successful and of course they are much enjoyed and much loved by many people and deservedly and rightly so. So there's a lot of positivity around these titles, but there's also a lot of negativity as well. And personally, I think a lot of that comes from a uh, well, unfulfilled and unreached potential. And that really is the great shame. But moving away from that and in a more positive note as to the question of what went right for space games, well today dozens and dozens of space games exist and many of them are very, very good. That in itself then really is a testament to where we are today in the arena of space games. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.